And we're back here on mystartup.live. I'm your host, Kevin Allen. And today's show is a special one always. We have a guest who's come up from San Diego. Uh, we're going to be talking about co-living with Dave Lowe, who's the founder of Quirky. Dave, thanks for joining us here on My Startup. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting concept. I mean, certainly something that uh, the investors are talking a lot about right oh, yeah. now, and, and you and I <laughs> talked about that. Yeah. Define to me what co-living means and, and what Quirky's, how Quirky is going to play into that. So it's an intentional way of getting people together in the same space. Um, typically, um, people who live in co-living communities, are, like they have a smaller bedroom, but there'll be larger communal areas where they share that experience, so like the kitchen, the living room. Um, in San Diego's case, it could be the hammocks out the back. That's right. Yeah, because it's great weather year-round. Oh, yeah. It's like every, every space outdoors in San Diego is a whole other room. That's it. If you're a weatherman, you're, your job is redundant. <laughs> so you brought, to, you brought to San Diego an actual pilot house in Correct. which you have uh, your customers living in the house. So describe how that works. Yeah, we had six, um, six entrepreneurs from San Diego, and we had another two come across the border from Tijuana in Mexico. So it was, uh, it was really kind of a cosmopolitan house. Um, we tested the, our pilot concept for a weekend and um, just amazing things happened. We had people come in um, and get things, I guess, clarified with the businesses. Um, there were a few collaborations and then we set kind of challenges to the entrepreneurs. And in one case, there were two founders with their own businesses and they kind of came together to, to form a super brand which is exactly what the intention is I exactly mean, the intention yeah. is to get like-minded people together in the same house exactly and allowing them to creatively you know work together that's in whichever it. fashion they feel is appropriate that's it the the issue I guess or one of the many issues we're trying to solve with quirky is uh, is the, the loneliness epidemic that's sweeping throughout the US oh, yeah. at the moment so um, the classic story is that you can't you know you move to the big city you're on your own you don't know, you don't have a network, you don't know any other entrepreneurs, and the idea is that you would move into Quirky and immediately be surrounded by people like you. Yeah, so right away you feel more comfortable, you feel at home, yeah. uh, you may actually meet new friends and, yeah. and, and meet their friends. So what is the business model? How, does this, how is this going to turn into a business for, for Quirky? Well, the, the obvious thing, um, or the obvious primary um, way of generating revenue is memberships. So people can come for, for example, like three months or six months or a year. Um, but we've got a few other ways that we're, we're looking at at the moment, um, specifically technology, um, as, as further ways to generate revenue. Okay. Uh, we just got back actually from the world's first co-living conference in San Francisco. Oh, wow. Uh, called CoLive, And there were a lot of co-living operators there. Um, and when they heard what we were working on with our technology, um, and, we kind of, and we showed them a a prototype of our smart mirror, um, they were very, very into what we were oh, doing. You're going to so. have to elaborate there, but <laughs> I, I want to talk I about CoLive. So CoLive was actually yeah. a new, it's a new, fairly new conference, I imagine. That's right. And yeah. and you were there pr present with, a, a, you know, a display or some something marketing related yeah. to engage with other investors and, and other uh, like-minded entrepreneurs. That's right. So what kind of... Um, the thing that we're talking about at the moment is creating smart communities. So I'm sure you're familiar with the, with the um, um, expression smart homes yep. um, and, and smart tech within the home. We're trying to kind of magnify that um, to create smart communities so that um, you can have mobile t technology that um, allows you kind of in and out of the complex okay. um, and in and out of your room. And so it's, yeah. And we can so security, security. And, and privacy as well yeah. as uh, identity is uh, you can kind of track that it, exactly. and know where people are yeah. as well. And from a social standpoint, people can kind of see if you're in or out, so they can kind of suggest, you know, let, like for well, example, let's go to the beach, let's go to the beach yep. and surf, like, they know that you're there, um, or maybe just in your room working. Um, but it could be a social um, coming up as well. But, but also just from a, from a kind of, um, going back to the safety, safety and regu regulatory, uh, standpoint if there was a fire we could actually s we, we would know who was on site and no and be able to notify them because you had contact yes, information exactly for the, yeah. the members of your of your house yeah so 
kind of like a, a fraternity, but in a in a more professional environment. Much more which, professional, yeah. Which you're targeting towards entrepreneurs and freelance-minded yeah. individuals. Yes. Okay. Digital nomads is um, is a, maybe an expression you're familiar with. Uh, these are the people that you see. They're location independent, and they'll be traveling uh, essentially with a laptop, and they might be working on a beach, or they might be coding in a co-working space. Um, they can work from anywhere, or, um, or again, using film equipment. Exactly. On the beach. Yeah, they could. Yeah, um, but these people are very isolated, and they also need you know they need the sense of community. So, and that is actually. Interesting because many of our uh, uh, audience are media professionals, production media. They're going around making independent films and, and corporate video and even feature films. Mm. Oftentimes working on location for three months up to six months, maybe even longer than that if it's a long film. And they're really needing like-minded individuals because they have a similar schedule. Uh, they're all on location. They don't, they're not from there. I mean, we've had a few companies contact us, um, like from New York and even London, where they say they want to be doing a shoot, but how could you know how can their people be accommodated? Because if it's a hotel, it's going to cost them a fortune. Of course. If it's you know they try and get a do a tenancy agreement, it'll be a, a year minimum with all the you know the checks and so Usually. on, and the deposits and everything else. So we we yeah we've definitely seen that um, the kind of filmmakers um, and media you know like TV people. But this is certainly be saying it quirky. This is different than an Airbnb in the sense that you're actually creating a community amongst those folks. So it's not just yeah. about the rental yeah. or or you know having the occupancy of the space, mm -hmm. but it's the community that you're creating and technology that you're building within that space. We, we really care about the San Diego community and any community that we go into. So I think the controversy, well I know the controversy right now in a lot of cities, especially San Diego is that people are coming in and staying at Airbnb for a night, they're partying really hard until the early hours, waking up all the neighbors, trashing the place and leaving. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, it's not giving an increased sense of community, it's actually kind of um, reducing that and causing friction in those communities. So again, we are tar you know, we're, we're targeting people who are professional and really wanna change the world and use, the, use Quirky as a kind of uh, springboard for success. Awesome. So let's talk about the pilot house. Yeah. You have a pilot house that was in San Diego yeah. that, how many members were in this pilot house? Eight. Eight, okay. Yeah. And what, is, what was the length of this pilot? It was just a weekend. Okay. Yeah. And, and you took sort of like feedback throughout the weekend so yes. you can obviously perfect the, uh, the next step, which is a, a longer extended pilot. Mm -hmm. It was right before startup week um, in June. And so we kind of positioned it as a startup boot camp to get people just, you know, really excited about going into startup week. So it's very intense and it gave us enough opportunity to, um, to, I guess, to get feedback, to analyze how we could improve things and what we needed to do when we launched. Um, the extended pilot, um, which is going to be our first house, we'll be launching very soon to, yeah, early 2018, hopefully, which it's, is it's sooner bigger. than... It's going to be bigger. It's going to be bigger. A little bigger, yeah. Okay. How many? How many are you targeting? What's We're probably sort of... going just a little bit bigger, so probably ten to twelve. Okay. And then after we've proven that concept, we, we're looking probably about thirty for the for the the main launch. And you're in obviously in this, you're building out what the monetary sort of value is among you know whether it be um, you know individual uh, metric based or just the whole house itself. So you'll be able to sort of say how much each individual would generate for the company as well as the whole house. Yeah, I mean the the, the two things we're looking at first, um, the priorities, um, building a true, you know, intentional community, um, and getting people excited about co-living. Yeah. Um, the you second gotta, thing is the concept. That's it's, it. Yeah. This, the second thing is to um, to show that our technology works within our own community, and then obviously we can kind of white label that and scale that into um, to other co-living communities to benefit the whole industry. And that's what, yeah, like I said, that's what was getting a lot of people excited in San Francisco because suddenly it's like, oh, we're, we're starved of tech in yeah. co-living communities and this is, the th this is the thing that's gonna enhance co-living and bring people closer together. And then obviously third is, is how do we make this work as a business to keep going. Now you mentioned when you were in San Francisco you previewed a smart mirror. Yeah. What, what, is that, what does that entail? So, um, so my CTO and co-founder, Max, um, he has used Raspberry Pi 
um, to, to create essentially a prototype smart mirror. And what it means is that, um, that you can, the idea is that you can look into it and use it as a regular mirror, but around the edges, like around the frame, you'll have um, data. So things like weather, um, time, Ooh. different time zones, okay. the time in different time zones. Um, it could be motivational messages for when you wake up. And then the goal is to use um, AI and uh, facial recognition technology to be able to interact with the mirror. So if I was to interpret that, really what Quirky is bringing is efficient, productive living. Yeah. That's it's a, a good, combination a good... of efficiency and productivity because yeah. the efficiency is that obviously you're spending less, you know, you're not having to facilitate an entire house on your own and all the landscaping and, and chores as well, you're sharing all those duties. But then also you're encouraging productivity and interactivity. Yeah. And also sustainability is another kind of focus as well. I so like it's, you know, the, the tech is cool and the gadgets and so on. You know, <laughs> everyone's going to be you know, excited about that and using them. Um, but sustainability, so how do we live in a more efficient way and be less wasteful? Right. So just simple things like we'll be developing technologies that um, alerts you to what is in your fridge and when it's going to go. Going to be go, bad. Yeah, okay. gonna essentially going to expire. Expire. Okay. Um, so that you know to use it and it doesn't you know, make the, the fridge stinky. Because <laughs> that's just a, a little thing in living that we've seen that when you share, there's a lot of um, uh, friction caused by, by yeah, behavioral. So you've yeah. taken, honestly, Dave, you've Issues. gone one step beyond co-living and you've dived right into sustainable co-living, mm -hmm. which is uh, an even better, uh, you know, presentation to investors. Yeah. And I mean, you think of things like um, like smart lighting, that kind of thing. So when you're in a room, light comes on when you leave the room and or there's no activity, no motion, the light can go off. And so we're also looking at just going even further to, because we've seen this issue with Airbnb where there are um, noise complaints that come through and then the police are knocking at the door saying turn sure. it down. Even before it gets to that, we'll have um, kind of microphones that will be picking up the decibel level. So if it goes over a certain level, um, we'll know to kind of, you know that there might be an issue and maybe to contact. Sometimes so that people just don't know police. they're getting there, you yeah, know, to yeah. that to that auditory level, and and you get excited, yeah. you're having a party, and you just the the noise just is is uh, too much. We we don't expect it. We don't expect too many issues on that front. Um, but we just in case we've kind yeah. of got this smart technology that will will alert us. Well, I'm curious. I want to pause for a moment and go back about Dave Lowe and where he obviously you're British. He came uh, here some time ago. Uh, and, and tell me your background. Where did you go to school? Um, I went to school in the northwest of England. Okay. Um, I was not great at school, actually, and I didn't <laughs> like the academic, academic system um, in England, and I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I was kind of, it was like I, was, I felt like I was wrestling with the, the system. Um, after school, um, I did a sound recording diploma in Manchester, okay. and then I went down to university in London, um, to do film history because I thought I wanted to be a director. So I kind of got into film just for a short period of time. Um, I love it. Then got into the corporate world and just tried lots of different things, uh, thinking that if I knew uh, a little about a lot, I could, you know, be an entrepreneur. And so then tried to get my own business going um, in 2008, which was actually a group self-publishing concept, um, which didn't actually launch, but we got quite close okay. and I was, you know, you know, had a few... Uh, co-founders um, around it. Self-publishing of? Um, so the idea was that you could kind of take all of your social media um, images and upload them to a digital photo book mm -hmm. and then you could invite all of your friends and then yeah publish as a group. So oh, it's nice. kind of like going to be a cool, okay. you know. Like so you can share your content, cool publish something yeah. as a community, as a group, which is exactly. yeah. sort of what you're also doing with, with Quirky, which is yeah potentially working together to create something uh, of a partnership, a collaboration. That's it. My, my, I would say my goal from, a, I'd say about 2008, and maybe even before then, um, my goal was to always build uh, businesses and brands that, uh, the, you know, they bring, the brands brought, bring brought people human, together. Pe yeah, human beings together. Why did it not launch? What was, the, what, what was the factor that kept you from launching? The, the big issue was that I didn't have a CTO, and with it being a tech business, 
yeah, that was kind of the, the big barrier. So then, of course, you had an idea and it yeah. got it got along, but it just you couldn't build it in, That's right. in the way that you needed yeah. to. I was I was looking at co-founders that were not initially anyway were, were not technology, you know, tech savvy. So Max is obviously a much <laughs> a much more appropriate uh, co-founder in that sense. Yeah, which is kind of funny because you think co-living, it's like you know, tech free, um, but we've we've seen how technology. Um, can really, like I said, it can really um, bring people closer together. Well, the importance in people's lives, and, and not only that, but, but for their, our safety and security and, and productivity, again. So yeah. let's take a look at what uh, Quirky uh, looks like. We, I think we have a little one-minute uh, reel uh, from the pilot house in San Diego. Yeah, thanks for that, Dave. And that definitely gives us an idea of what it was like to live in this house for just a weekend, rather. But uh, what's coming up to next quarter? So uh, what's what's the next steps along the way, uh, and and why was San Diego the chosen city for uh, Quirky? Well, I moved initially from Eng from London in England to Austin, Texas, to launch my first startup, um, which was Uber Pong, uh, the ping pong business. Um, but when I was there. Um, I like I, in the back of my mind, I always wanted to to launch Quirky, but I wanted to do a business to kind of get you know build my personal brand and just get great experience. So I described that first startup as a, as my MBA. Um, Uber Pong. Uber Pong. Yeah. What was Uber Pong? Uh, we created custom ping pong paddles for celebrities, big brand, all the biggest brands in the world. Okay. Um, Even with pretty, with licensing. Uh, we license. didn't we didn't go the licensing okay. route because okay. the comp like the agents or the companies okay. would come to us so they they obviously they owned so you, you the kind of found marks. a niche yeah absolutely um, I was seeing how ping pong was just exploding in you know like cities like New York and London and um, San Francisco so I yeah but there was something missing and that was the way to customize paddles and it, became, it was kind of a novelty gift but it was yeah. did it, you make some money um, did pretty good yeah okay I, I exited this year okay. after. Just shy of five years, yeah. So it was a success. So was family. that some of those funds were used for you know the initial startup of Quirky as well? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, that was that was always the goal to be kind of um, self-sustainable going into this, and then we could kind of um, yeah pool our resources, myself and Max, and, um, and be able to get to the point where we had we'd done enough ourselves right. to take to investors. So you don't really need you didn't need investor money from day one. Mm -hmm you were able to build out this concept and prove that it had value yeah. for your investor group. And exactly. what are you asking for? What's the, what's the ask going forward? I mean, do you need a big influx of cash to sort of prove it or, uh, excuse me, launch it? Or are you kind of going to do that on your own as well? Well, the, the first thought was that we were going to go from the pilot to acquiring just a, a big building and then, and then actually div like renovating and developing the flow of that community and launching, but we've actually seen a kind of slightly smaller opportunity and a way to get off the ground where we can actually be making revenue from day one um, and then proving the concept so that when we get to that point where we need investor capital, it's we've just got a good growth. model and it's, yes. It's just about growth. Exactly. And, and we, expanding out of the cities. Yeah, and, it's, and, I, and we're confident that because we put in that kind of early spade work we, and the sweat equity, if you, if you like, um, we'll, we, we will be able to retain more of the company, more control. When you when you built Uber Pong, though, you said you were building your personal brand. What what does that mean? And talk about why that's so important for what was going to be quirky. It's it's absolutely crucial because um, having spoken to founder friends who are on like third businesses, they said you know a lot of investors won't touch you if it's your first business. It's if you if it's your second business, it's like they know it's not your first ra rodeo. They're gonna they're gonna look a little. At bit least more you're carefully. not gonna make the amateur mistakes. Right, and if you've come out of it as you know. Profitable. successfully and profitable then they're, they're definitely it's a whole other conversation they know they know what you're they know that you you know what you're doing mm -hmm. and especially if you've got a co-founder as well to share the load it's yeah what business sort of lessons did you learn in your corporate experience that you're now either applying or avoiding yeah. in your entrepreneur career I think a 
I learned what not to do primarily. Um, what I was noticing is that people were coming into to work and it was, you know, heads were down, it was Monday morning, it was like, the, you know, the case of the Mondays. And then it was hump day and then it was celebrate on Friday. And I said to myself then, I never, I wanted, to, I wanted to build companies where people were coming in on Monday and they were excited to be there. When it hit Friday, they didn't want to go home. That was always the goal. And so personally, that's how I feel, but obviously I want to create a company that's, um, that gets people that excited to be there. How do you deal with managing, though, a work-life balance, even encouraging that work-life balance inside the quirky living space, if you are, you know, what you would encourage within the quirky living space? It's a, it's a good question. I think that's one of the reasons, one of the big reasons I chose San Diego, because, you know, the weather's great. Um, and so if you're working really, really hard inside for hours and you just get zoned in, you go, it's the grind and you, you, you're there. Um, there's not that feeling of I'm missing out on great weather because any time you go out, right. it's going to be good. Yeah. So and you have always... something to look forward to, and that it, it will be it, it will yeah. be uh, worth your your effort. Let's yeah. say. And we we're actually myself and Max we're, we're really kind of focused on wellness and health and you know good like nutrition, good diet, um, which which and all these things we want to to kind of um, implement within the quirky communities as well. So if we've got to be we've got to be interested in that ourselves, and so you know you you've done maybe eight hours, nine hours, and you come outside and the sun's still out, you're getting your vitamin D, maybe you go for a surf, um, run on the beach. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's a great life, we've got a great lifestyle there. You know, it doesn't have to be go to Silicon Valley, you know, and just the weather's not great there, and just the grind all day, you come outside, it's dark, it's cold, um, and then you're paying <laughs> ridiculous I amounts know, of money I on know, rent and to live there. New so York we, included, we got New York it's 35 degrees right now, but. We got uh, it really good in San Diego. And, and another huge thing that people miss in, in the valley in, in LA, LA is, um, is the fact that Tier 1 is there. So, you know, oh, a few wow, years yeah. ago it was an issue, but now it's like it's a, it's a kind of blossoming entrepreneurial community. And so we're seeing kind of potential And they're for utilizing, utilizing the resources yeah. of that San Diego brings yes. uh, or, that, or that you can acquire in San Diego and yeah. bring back to Tier 1. Exactly. And all, it's, all the talk right now is building binational brands. So we see ourselves within maybe a year being a binational brand and having a specifically a, a, a even right there in Mexico. Yeah, having a location in Tijuana. Oh, wow. It's only fourteen miles from where we are. I mean, it's super super close. But you got a train to the border. You can walk across in like five minutes, and then you're there. And there's great restaurants, um, really good bars. I mean, it's just yeah, this, the entrepreneurial scene's really up and sure. coming. But why not Austin then? Because there was there's still vicinity in Mexico is not bad, and you are already there. So why bring it to San Diego? It's a it's a little landlocked, so I'd say about three or four hours from the border. Yep. And um, we just we wanted to be on the like the coast. Right on the, the coast. The ocean's just yep. got that attraction. Uh, where are, are you going to take Quirky in 2018? You mentioned a, a, an extended pilot. How is that going to work, and what's next? So the extended pilot, um, we're hoping to be in the Pacific Beach area of San Diego, um, very, very close to the, to the ocean. Um, that will house, we think, 10 people. And then once, I would say probably within about, maybe within six months, we'd be looking to, to do the next location. And I know we spoke about even Atlanta being, you know, a new hub for filmmaking. And, yeah. uh, you know, you were a former filmmaker. You know what they're doing down there in Atlanta. Could be a, a, a great next step is to even go into that film community and find meccas where, where um, you know, production's taking place. It's, it, it, it's cool when people kind of, you know, will email and say, this is like, you know, it's a production company or we're doing filming. Um, in your region, can we can we come stay there? You know, and and, and the beautiful thing is that we see it kind of like uh, it's like cross pollination. So, if you come to Quirky, you might be a filmmaker, you might be a digital nomad traveling the world. So you're into travel. You're an entrepreneur with a startup. Maybe you're a travel nurse, um, professional. You know, it's it's this kind of melting pot. Um, and and yeah. Will cool you things. have events that cool encourage, you know, that business development, you know, things that when you bring in special guests into the home every now and like a Thursday night or whatnot? We've, yeah, we've got an idea um, of how we can do that. Um, quirky talks. We've kind of like a TED talk. Yeah, yeah. Kind all of right. Like all right. TED, TED talks um, crank to 11. <laughs> um, yeah. 
very, very, essentially kind of um, new spins on old themes. That's kind of probably the best way of putting it. And I it's can, like exciting talks. With, with all the sort of creatives that, that would be in this space, the, the immense amount of content and storytelling that's going to come out of this. I mean, you're, yeah. you're going to be telling stories of people's lives, yep. with their permission, of course. Exactly. And we want to document it as well, so um, not quite like the, um, what's it called, the diary room in, in Big Brother on right. reality TV, but um, <laughs> for people who want to use Quirky as a platform right. for their venture, we want to do everything we can to make them succeed. So maybe like a little interview room and they can yeah. just voluntarily yeah. offer their, their progress. Exactly. And with the tech we're developing, it would be easy to do that. Literally just hit a button and just give awesome. your, your account of the so day and then go. It's a yeah. smart home. It's a community. Smart community, yeah. Smart community. Yeah. It's a smart home, yeah. technologically speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's for a new breed of, of individuals who are working from wherever they please. Exactly. In that, yep. in that reality. Yeah. <laughs> and we're kind of, initially, we'll be targeting kind of almost um, digital natives and millennials. But we've, um, again, this from the conference, we've seen that there's an opportunity um, with families as well. And so, um, uh, yeah. I'm, I was I'm, just thinking, I mean, I'm, I'm a, a new daughter, dad. My, yeah, exactly. If I can, I'm a, if I'm a dad, I can, Max is a dad. can imagine, you had date nights already taken care of because, yeah, yeah. you know, Mark and Luis are going to take care of your baby. That's and, it, yeah. that's it. And we don't just want to resign to the fact that we've got to go out to the, the white picket fence in the suburbs and just disappear. Right. So how could we potentially create a, um, a quirky co-living community for families where wow. it's they're all kind of entrepreneurial where they've got kids? So that's maybe the next thing. Yeah. That's great. That's great. There's a lot of things I can see uh, coming. And I, I like the way that you've built the company, not just about one aspect. It's not just about living in a home together. It's about creating op opportunity for yourself. Yes. Well, Using for, community. For you, yeah, for yourself, but there's also the potential to collaborate as well. Yeah. So you might meet your co-founder at Quirky, and then you start a That's business cool that changes the world. The next Uber, the next Uber boss says that they made, they, they met their co-founder at Quirky Co Living. So, how how will folks find you on uh, online social media? Uh, what are some of your profiles? So our website is quirky.co, and that's Q W E R K Y. Um, social media handle is at Quirky Co Living, and if you want to use a hashtag, use hashtag Stay Quirky. I was going to ask about the name and why Stay Quirky. What does that mean to you? Well, we, we kind of like things with uh, like multiple meanings. So stay quirky, um, remain quirky, remain who you are, remain yourself, like your true self. Um, and then, of course, stay at Quirky. There you go. So, come, so come join us. Quirky, a great business uh, model. Uh, Dave Lowe, uh, he's ready to uh, you know, change the world in 2018 and, and create opportunity, create sustainable living, uh, create communities that are really going to change the world. Dave, I want to thank you for joining us here on My Startup. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, and uh, check out the uh, quirky.co and uh, stay quirky. Thank you so much. We're on My Startup. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.